If you're looking around the country, if you're looking around the globe, you are seeing there was so much violence and issues going on within our communities. And so, you know, we want to work especially hard to make sure that we're looking out for what should we be focused on in our churches or around our churches. So I want to talk about today uh, as part of this combating violence and making our churches a more difficult target or a harder target. I want to talk about what we should be looking for as church security team members as as far as suspicious and, and what things we should be looking for around our churches just to make sure that we're covering the basics. Hi, I'm Joe. Thanks for joining me for this edition of the Church Security Answer Man. Let's get right into talking about what should we be looking for as church security team members. And these are the kind of things I want to talk to you. This is a good training for your team, for yourself as an individual. This is even great training for your greeters and other folks as well that are the eyes and ears for your team, for your church, as far as looking at what issues are going on around the church. So what are we looking for? You know, we should be looking for these kind of things, safety issues, concerns, hazards, what's going on around the church. And, and when I'm out looking for these kind of things, even hazards that might, you might sometimes think that they're not part of the security team, but really they are, they're part of safety and security. Plus when you're out doing these kind of checks and looking for things, you may run across other issues, other things going on. I sweep the parking lot in the mornings at my church and I'm looking for trash and those kind of things, but it also helps me see if there's other hazards or safety concerns or even bigger issues going on, if you will. We should be looking for persons of interest or concern when we're, uh, at, when we're conducting our security duties or when we're looking out for the church. Is there somebody walking around across the street, in your parking lot, even on the sidewalks that's of concern? They don't look right, something's not right about them, or they seem to be scoping out the church a little bit, but yet they're not coming in. They could be a nervous visitor, first time visitor, uh, or there's some other problem. So we want to pay attention to those kind of things. Criminal activity or suspicious activity, we should be looking for the components of that as well. What's going on? What is somebody doing? So let's talk deeper into those issues, if you will. What are you looking for as a church security team member or a member of the church or the greeter team? Uh, you know, first of all, we should be looking at, if you look at a general category, we should be looking at for emotions things we don't normally see at church. We may see some people that are a little bit upset or uh, a little bit fired up, but we shouldn't normally see things that are, you know, very out of control, very emotional people. And those could be in the auditorium. Those could be in the parking lot, the sidewalk outside of the church, wherever those things might be. We want to pay attention to emotions. Those might be an angry person, somebody that's out of control, we don't normally see that. You know, where does it come from? It comes from crisis in somebody's life, or it can come from mental health issues as well. So we need to pay attention to these things that rise above the normal, if you will. So crying, excessive crying with someone, not just your normal, somebody that's sad or someone that's been brought to an emotional point, uh, making some decisions in their life with maybe crisis or maybe just with their uh, uh, being saved or their salvation, whatever uh, your church uh, looks at those processes and those kind of things, you know, uh, laughing, excessive or, or certainly not appropriate. People that are maybe even kind of by themselves in the corner and they're laughing or, or they just laugh louder than everybody else. I've seen that in our church before, and I begin to look at that person or pay attention when they laugh a little louder or a little longer than other people. What's going on with that person? Uh, nervous behavior, evasiveness. Maybe they kind of try to go around you or when they see you and you're looking at them, they look down and they go in a different direction. You know, most people that I talk to, and even in the security capacity, and I'm kind of I'm a large person, but I, we keep our security stuff low profile. And uh, so we're not readily identified as security. 
But, you know, when I go to talk to most people and greet them, most people will say something back. They don't look like they're trying to go a different direction or go around me or avoid me or avoid conversation. Uh, what about restless behavior? You know, they can't sit still. They can't stand still. That would be something else that I would look for relative to kind of emotions or something going on there, if you will, things that we don't normally see. And then on the other side of it, certainly I want to mention no emotions as well. If they're just cold, no emotions, and uh, they don't seem to be happy or sad or any of that kind of thing when they show up at church or when you go to talk to them, that's something that you want to pay attention to. Now, what else should we look for as a church security team or member or a greeter or some someone that's looking out for the church that's interested in these uh, issues. We should look for unusual appearance of things. It's things that don't look right. And one of those that's very popular, of course, is the backpack, somebody that's carrying a backpack. And for some of you, depending on your location, you may see a lot of backpacks. For others of us, we don't see those that often. So uh, other concealment methods, you know, we also talk about the big trench coat, somebody wearing a big, long trench coat, uh, when it's hot weather, warm weather. So things that are not appropriate, ability to conceal things. And so heavy clothing or backpacks or other things like that, you know, and we want to go talk to that person and try to uh, investigate that a little bit. And we're certainly doing it in a warm manner. We're uh, greeting them. We're warm and friendly to them. Just in case it's an innocent situation, we want them to feel like we care about them and we're still a welcoming, friendly environment. We're just investigating uh, what's going on. We can look for military clothing. Sometimes people will pick up military clothing as a way to try to, from my experience and my perceptions, to try to get people to uh, give them handouts and stuff based on the fact that they uh, come up with a story that they were in the military. And some may have been. We have certainly a lot of homeless veterans, so we could have that situation. But does it seem out of place? I'll give you a great example of what I'm talking about. We had a gentleman come into our church one time with, and he had a huge backpack on, and he said he was traveling, walking, hitchhiking across the United States. And he had some sort of little uniform on it, had some little round patches on it that I did not recognize at all. They were just like the size of a, a 50 cent piece or a little bigger than a quarter. And uh, he said that he was in the Lithuanian military and he was on leave and he was just hiking across the United States and, and doing some world traveling. And I still, to this day, you know, I certainly was welcoming and friendly to him. We put his backpack, we've used, followed our policy. We put his backpack in a side room, closed the door, a, a room that was away from the main auditorium in case there was something bad in there. And then we let him go in and I kind of watched him, but you know, I suspect he wasn't a, mil a member of the Lithuanian military. So his uniform was totally wrinkly and dirty. And I mean, the patches were just like barely patches. So it just did not look right. Those are the things we want to look at, pay attention to. And we certainly did that on that day when he visited our church and talked to him, visited very friendly with him. And just, you know, we got rid of the backpack, the main issue, and then we let him go in and then we watched him. So as we had conversation with him, welcomed him, we didn't see anything extremely out of the ordinary. I do suspect with him there was a little bit of mental health issue but it didn't seem uh, like it was out of control or uh, something that would become a problem. So we let him go in and sure enough, it wasn't after service. He came out and picked up his backpack and proceeded on his way. So, uh, you know, so the military clothing, we can also go along with that example, poor hygiene, clothing's not taken care of. They're not really taking care of themselves. So poor hygiene, they're dirty, they're smelly. Most people, when they come to church, you know, they're trying to, take care of themselves, look their best. And maybe sometimes we don't have the best clothing or can't afford those, but we're trying to do our best if you can, if you will. So, uh, so we want to pay attention to people that come in with that poor hygiene. That's a great example of somebody who's having a mental health breakdown. They're having, they're struggling. They're, they're having mental health issues and they're not taking care of themselves. It's one of the uh, oftentimes one of the first signs that we can look at when somebody just is disregarding, they're ta not taking care of their hair, they're not washing, they're not shaving, uh, whatever the case may be. So, 
We can look for anti-religious signs. Those could be on clothing. If we're out in the parking lot, we can see bumper stickers or other little signs on cars that show that they're anti-religious. And so we want to pay attention to that. You know, we're still going to be warm and friendly to these folks. I'm certain. And then, but we're paying attention. We're watching them. And as soon as something's out of control or there's another flag there, if they're showing those anti-religious things and then they have a backpack or bulky clothing, you know, now we have two or three issues going on. So we're really paying attention to that uh, person, if you will, and really greeting them and uh, doing some little bit of discussion with them. So if we can see if there's uh, any kind of issues there. And, and, and along that, you know, maybe we look for a tire or clothing that's just, it's inappropriate. It's not conducive to coming into church and being around our families and those kind of things. So we're paying attention to that unusual appearance as well. And then how are we going to deal with these things? And that's something I hope you'll explore. You know, if we're talking about these inappropriate things and we're not really talking about how are we going to deal with each one of these, but it would be a great discussion for your team or for you to have with a team leader or for you just to think in your mind, if this did happen at your church, what are you going to do? If you're a greeter or someone else, hopefully you're going to go tell somebody from your security team or your whatever you call those folks, whatever the name is for them, you're going to go talk to them and say, hey, I just want you to know there's I'm observing this behavior at this person and they're over here seated or they're out in the parking lot. And so, you know, we want to let people know. And then how would you deal with it? Who would you go tell? Or if you're that person, people would come to. How are you going to deal with that? Then we look for unusual actions or behavior. We might term it as well. So things like uh, keeping their hands in their pockets. And, 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 and we really know that when people get nervous, if they have drugs or guns, I know that from my law enforcement experience, there is a good chance that their hands will go to those objects when they get nervous and stressed. They're, they'll put their hands in their pockets. They'll tap their hand on that pocket and, and hold it over that pocket if they're nervous. They'll go to those uh, issues if they will. So when somebody's doing that behavior, and especially you put it together with something else where they're inappropriate behavior or actions or clothing, and, and then we have those kind of signs as well. Now you have two or three issues that are of concern. So standing up at inappropriate times, you know, maybe they stay standing in church or they stand up at times where no one else is standing up. Maybe we might even see them turn and look at the uh, a congregation, look at people. Uh, we used to have a gentleman in our church that uh, uh, used to stand and, and he'd sit up towards the front, but he'd spend a lot of time turning around looking at people. And, and he does have some struggles with his uh, uh, mental actions and those kind of things. So great guy. Uh, uh, but, you know, we do see that kind of behavior sometimes when there are those issues. So inappropriate behavior. And sometimes it can be as simple as just standing up when it's not appropriate, staying standing longer or turn around looking at people when it's just not uh, appropriate. Uh, being intoxicated, signs that they're intoxicated or impaired, and that can be by alcohol or drugs. So look for those signs and indicators. And, and if you see that kind of stuff, you know, you want to be cautious with that person. They could act out. We do want to remember, though, that sometimes people will get to a point in their life where they maybe they have an addiction and they are seeking out uh, God to help them or they're coming to your church for help. So you may see people there that uh, are not a danger or they're not suspicious, except for the fact that they have a odor of alcohol about them or they have some leftover signs of uh, drug uh, inducement that, or that they're using drugs. We just a few weeks ago had a gentleman come in that showed many signs that he had probably uh, consumed a lot of controlled substances the day or the night before and uh, was showing signs of that, but that wasn't bad, but he just wanted a coffee and a donut. And so we gave him that and he was on his way. So we wouldn't have let him stay and go into the church auditorium and be an interruption 
uh, because of his influence, but uh, we did help him out a little bit and then uh, he went on his way. So sh- seeing signs of that, make an evaluation. What are you going to do in those situations? Someone that shows up and just starts asking questions about your pastor or priest or other members, you know, it's not like a meetup. It's like, does Joe go to church here? Uh, you know, it's, it's, they're not asking, it, it, you know, they're not asking appropriate questions. In fact, most people I know when they're greeted, when we've greeted them or I've greeted them even out in the parking lot, it's, they tell me I'm here to meet Sally or I'm looking for Sally. She told me to meet her here. It's not a questioning like uh, they're not really sure of that person's attendance or circumstances, or they're asking weird questions about your church leadership as well. People talking to themselves. Yeah, that's a great unusual behavior or unusual action to pay attention to. Uh, we had a gentleman one time that came in, he was talking a little bit to himself and he was standing in the lobby, combing his hair, kind of standing up against the wall with his head down. And he was combing his hair right there in the lobby, right within our people. Uh, and so obviously inappropriate behavior. You just don't see that. Most people don't want to do their grooming. They're not talking to themselves and they're not keeping their head down and leaning up against the wall. So very unusual, inappropriate behavior for what we normally see. So we went and talked to him. I went and talked to him and found out that he eventually told me through some, just some great visiting we had on our way to get a donut, get some coffee for him that he in fact had suffered from a mental health issue. So uh, and we ended up letting him go into the church anyway, but we watched him. We left a person with him, uh, a couple rows back behind him who was paying attention to him and watching him. And he did fine through the service. But later, as he was leaving, he had a bit of a, a, a meltdown, if you will. So uh, so just paying attention to these kind of things, people talking to themselves or other inappropriate behavior. People you might see people that run towards the church inappropriately. You know, they're running across the parking lot. They're running up to the doors. It's not kids, it's adults. And it just seems kind of odd. It's enough to go over and make sure that you talk to them and give them a warm greeting and and kind of try to interview them a little bit and see what's going on with them. Go on a coffee walk to get some coffee with them and take them down to the free donuts or coffee or water, whatever you might have, and, and just ch- talk with them as as uh, as you have the opportunity. So, and if you're a greeter or someone else, then you're flagging security people to have them uh, take a look or talk to them just a little bit. Uh, somebody that stands or remains around their cars or in their cars for an excessive amount of time. They're in your parking lot. I've seen people stand out in our parking lot and smoke cigarettes for an excessive amount of time. You know, it's probably worth the chat or uh, calling somebody to go out and chat with him. Or, you know, in some circumstances, if it gets kind of extreme, they've been out there for quite some time or maybe they're making quite a mess with their cigarettes. Then maybe you do call police, depending on uh, what your situation is for uh, law enforcement response. But at least we're probably going out and talking to them a little bit. Uh, And then, uh, you know. Counter surveillance from near or in the church, people that are standing and just looks like they're looking at the church. Maybe they're sitting in their car. Maybe somebody standing outside the car, somebody sitting in the car or they're standing across from the church and they just seem to be surveilling uh, the church, paying attention to what's going on. Maybe you see them come in and look up at can't look for cameras or look at looking around at your doors and locks and those kind of things. It's worth a a chat with them at that point. So trying to find out what their mental health or what their situation is, try to find out maybe a little bit more about them. Odd conversations that don't seem uh, relevant. So needless topics, needless chat that just doesn't seem, maybe it seems like they're nervous. Maybe you're seeing signs of nervousness as well as the uh, uh, behavior is inappropriate. You know, and maybe they're going to the bathroom a lot or they stay in the bathroom for an excessive amount of time, for a very long time. Those are the kind of folks we want to pay attention to. Those are just indicators. We, you know, we look at what should you look for? These are the lists that I'm giving you. And I hope you'll go back and review this video, that you'll share it with your team, share it with others, and uh, just look at these and then discuss what we would do with each of these circumstances. What are you going to do if you see these? as just a member of the church, an attendee to the church, what are you gonna do if you see some of these 
and you're a greeter. What are you going to do if you see some of these and you're a church leader and so on? Whatever your position is, what are you going to do in these circumstances? Who are you going to go talk to? And then what are we going to do about these circumstances and how are you going to handle them? Just some great uh, ideas and thoughts for our mind. I am so happy that you joined us here today and spent some time with us. I've got other videos that I hope you'll take a look at. Uh, and those, our hub is really at thechurchsecurityanswerman.com. So go over there, visit us there. There's all kinds of free and uh, different paid things and free forms, that kind of stuff that you can uh, take a look at. Uh, you also like and subscribe here to this channel so that you get notified when we put out some new material. We'd love to have you as part of our community where you're here when we release information. Leave me a comment. I try to get to all of those that I certainly can so that uh, we can share ideas and I can share back with you and give you my thoughts and I like for other people to read those uh, uh, comments of what your programs are doing or what things you wish you could do better so that we can all share information. And we can do that right here in the comment section uh, uh, by you sharing and us uh, having a great conversation. So now if you want more information, hey, just stay tuned. I've got another video here for you that uh, will be great information for you to go right along with this and uh, keeping you up to date on thoughts, opinions, those kind of things, what other teams are doing. So take a look at this video uh, right here on the screen.